Well, good morning, everybody. So excited again for Sunday morning. It ends up becoming, whoa, my laptop has sound coming out of it. Um, and it ends up being like my most, like the highlight of the week is when we get to gather together uh, on Sundays and just worship together. Uh, again, if you guys don't know me, my name is Dustin. I'm the lead pastor here, Victory Church on the Rock, along with my wife, Beth. And we're, again, we're so excited. If you're guests with us, so excited that you're joining us today. And, you know, it was so interesting when Beth and I, Beth and I started here uh, in March. We started here, uh, March 1st was, was our first day here, and this whole time, what has kind of been on my heart and what we've been praying about and what I've been feeling God is saying is that come September, something is going to happen. And now, to be honest, what that is, I don't know, but we've been feeling so strongly that come September, God is going to do something new. God is going to do something in our church, in our city, around, all around us. That's what we fully believe. And so for me, you know, you know, I worked student ministry for a long time. And so the start of the year for me is always September. I don't know what it is like for you. Maybe as parents, September feels like the start of the year. That's what it feels like to me. And I believe that this new year, September 2021, God is going to do something right here in our church. I believe God is going to do something that we can't even fathom. He's going to do something that we couldn't even imagine because that's the type of God that we serve. And so today we're going to be going through this. Now yesterday, I was actually at a wedding. My, my brother-in-law, who actually played drums with us last week, he got married yesterday. His name's Josh. He got married in. So yesterday, we were at this wedding. And it was a super cute wedding. It was outside. It was this cute arch and wedding stuff. And, and, uh, but there's another thing that happened to us that day. Is there was, I'm not kidding you, at least three billion wasps surrounding us. Like I'm telling you, we were surrounded. Like, 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 I, I honestly, now, one thing you got to know about me is I am terrified of wasps, like full on terrified. Like, if, if you were at the wedding yesterday, you saw me. I was, I was, I was in panic mode, okay? Because if there's a wasp, first of all, if there's a wasp near me, like, I'm going to freak out. But if there's a wasp near my baby, I'm going to, I'm going to, like, try and hurt the wasp, you know? Like, try and slap it away, but then I'm scared to slap it because what if it stings me? And so I'm just, like, terrified. And there's these wasps around us, and it was crazy. But it's this beautiful, beautiful ceremony where we saw something new be created. You know, it was this beautiful ceremony where something new came, where two people grew together as one, as husband and wife, and were moving into their future. And we're, I believe that's a, kind of similar to what we're doing right here at our church, is we are stepping into the unknown right now. We are stepping into the future right now. We are stepping into the new that God has for us right now. And as all of us know, most of us know, we are a church that's in the middle of a transition. You know, we're about six months into a transition. You know, the previous pastor, his name is Pastor Jonathan, incredible guy, awesome guy, meeting with him this week, love him so much. Uh, he, was, he was here for 14 years, faith, serving faithfully. And then in March, there was a transition where Beth and I stepped in as the new pastors, the new leaders of our church, of Victory Church on the Rock. We're in the middle of this transition, and I know for some of us, this transition has been a challenge. For some of us, it's been, it's been amazing. For some of us, it's been hard, and it's been a lot. And we're still in the middle of it, right? Six months in, we're still in the middle of this transition. But again, as soon as I started, God was speaking to me that September was going to be the start of something new. That September was going to be the start of, of, some, of, of change, of things being different. And so I believe that, that God is leading us into something so beautiful. You know, and that things are changing around us, right? Things are changing in our midst, in our city, in our church, in our lives. Things are changing. But the only thing that is always constant is Jesus. The only thing that we can actually hold on to as the constant in our life, the thing that will never change, the thing that's been the same when we were born and will be the same till we die is Jesus. And so when we look at our life, we do not put our hope in anything else except for him. We cannot put our hope in the things that used to be. We can't put our hope in the things that were. We have to put our hope in Jesus and what he's going to do. We have to look forward rather than continuously looking back. And God has something big for us. No matter the changes we are making in this season, no matter the changes even, we have an election coming up this month. The things are happening around us. And what we need to do is hold on to Jesus. No matter what happens in the elections, no matter what happens, our hope is not in anything other than him. Our hope is not in our government. Our hope is in Jesus. 
That is what we put our hope in. It does not matter what happens at the end of September. What matters is that Jesus is still moving. What happens is that he's still on the throne. What we need to put our hope in is him and nothing else. That's what we put our hope in is Jesus. But God is doing something new right now in our midst. And we can see this so clearly in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 43 verse 18 to 19. This is what it says. It says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now when I read this verse, I think these are powerful, powerful, powerful words of God speaking to us, speaking to his church. And I believe this is what God is speaking to our nation right now. This is what he's saying. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. I am doing a new thing. And I believe these words are so important for us right now in this moment. These, these words that I am doing a new thing. I will make a way in the wilderness and, and rivers in the deserts. He is calling you and me to be a part of the new that he is creating. He is calling you and I, he's calling us in this city, in our family, to be a part of what he's going to do in our nation this year. Because I believe it's going to be something beautiful and it's going to be something cool. And I want to spend the next few moments together walking through three key parts of these scriptures together. So we're going to start right at verse 18, Isaiah 43, 18 says this, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. And so my first thought today is remember not. And I want to read this, I think some of us might be a little bit confused, right? Because it says, remember not the things of old, remember not the past, no, don't consider the things of old. But what I think the heart of this statement is, is do not let your past distort the, your view of the future. Do not let the past color how you see the future being. Because I think a lot of us, what our past was, we believe is our future. We believe the pain of our past. We believe even the good things of our past. We believe the best things of our past are going to be our future. But God is saying, no, I'm doing something new. Those things were amazing. And they, those things were for a season. But we're stepping into a new season together. He's saying, remember not everything that used to be and get excited about what's coming. Because what's coming is going to be better than what was. You know, God is always doing something. He's always moving. He's always doing something new. And he's calling you, he's calling me to be a part of the new that he's going to do in our church. He's calling you and me to be a part of the beautiful new that he's about to do. But we cannot let the way things used to be get in the way of what things are supposed to be. Well, we can't, we can't let what, what used to happen be what we step into for what we need to do because God is saying, no, no, everything is different now. Church can't be the same anymore. You know what we need to focus on? Is not anything other than Jesus. I think for so long, the local church, we, we've struggled with this, right? Because we've, we've got caught up in so many other things. You know, there's, this, there's churches around where all, all they're preaching about is, is government. All they're talking about is, 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 every, is restriction. And I think, no, we're, we're supposed to talk about Jesus. We're supposed to talk about the hope of the world. We're not supposed to only talk about how bad things are. We need to talk about how good things are going to be. That's what the church is about. The church is about Jesus. And the church cannot be the same as it was. Again, I've said this over and over, but I don't want to go back to normal. I don't. I want to step into the future and step into the great things that God has for you, the great things that God has for me, the great thing that God has for us as a church. That's where I want to go. I don't want to go back to normal. I want to step into the supernatural. I want to see people walk through these doors who are hurting, who are broken, and they can find healing. You know what I want to see? I want to see people who come in here sick and they find healing. You know, I believe we as a church need to be known for what we're about, not what we're against. What are we about? We're about Jesus. That's what we're about. That's who we serve, the Savior of the world, Jesus. That's what we are about. We're not about anything else. You know, it's so easy, though, 
for us to say this, right? To remember not. You know, it's so easy for us to, to say, okay, I'm stepping into the future. I'm going to step into it. But then we start to think about and remember how good things used to be. I think for a lot of us, you know, before COVID, a lot of us wish we could probably go back to the way things were, right? We do. You know, we wish that, that, that things were like they used to be. You know, some of us even, you know, in our church, we're like, man, I, I, I wish they were what they used to be. But I'm telling you, we're not supposed to be used to people. We're supposed to be future people. We're supposed to be stepping into new constantly. The new things that God has for you and for me, that's what he's called us to do, to step into the new. It's so hard to live this out because we all have a past, right? And some of us, when we look at our past, it hurts us. It causes trauma and fear. We all have a past. We have past relationships. We've been hurt in the past by people. We've been hurt in the past by church. We've been hurt in the past by pastors. We've been hurt in the past by our spouse, by our kids, by our parents. We have past fears. You know, fears of whatever it might be. We have past addiction and habits that we've been trying to break over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And we feel like we can't get out because we're stuck. We have past beliefs, things we used to believe that maybe we don't believe anymore. Things that we used to believe before COVID, we don't believe anymore. Things that we never thought we would believe before COVID, now we believe. And we see this constantly. The only voice that we need to listen to is Jesus' voice. What is he speaking to you right now in this moment? You know, we, we can't go back. As much as we want to go back, we will never go back to the way things were. It's never going to be the same. But I don't think it's supposed to be the same. I think we are supposed to be doing something different, something new. You know, my vision is I want to see people who have never met Jesus find Jesus. That, 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 like, I'm just telling you right now, that is what I want to see. I want to see people who, who have never stepped into a relationship with Jesus find Jesus and get baptized and serve Jesus with all their heart. That's what I want to see for our city. In our city, there's hundreds of thousands of people who need Jesus. Hundreds of thousands of people. And we have the hope. We have the hope. We have the new, have what God is doing. And our responsibility is to share that with people. We cannot be hoarders of the gospel. We need to be sharers. So easy to hoard, right? It's so easy to hold on to, you know, this, this news, this hope, this, this love, this joy, this peace. It's so easy to hold on to. Do you know what's hard? It's sharing it with somebody. It's, it's hard. It's scary, right? It's not easy to share it. But our responsibility is to share what God is doing in our life. Because the past, we can never go back to. But where we can go is into the future. That's what we have the opportunity to create. We can't change the past, but we can create a better future. We can create a better future for our children, for their children, for their children. We can create a better future together. Because that's, I believe, what God is calling us to do together. Because he... We need to spend more time not reliving our past, but creating a better future with the creator of the universe, the one who's constantly creating and doing new things. You know, Isaiah 43, verse 19, the first part of 19, 19a says this, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I think God is doing a new thing. He, he didn't just do new things in the past. He is doing a new thing right now in this moment. He is not just going to do a new thing. He is doing a new thing. But the interesting thing, the next part of that verse is I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. But this, this question comes in. Do you not perceive it? Are we actually paying attention? Are you paying attention to what God is doing in your family? Are you paying attention to what God is doing in your heart? Are you perceiving what God is saying I'm going to do? Now it springs forth. There is something growing, but we need to actually perceive it. We need to actually listen to what God is saying. Are you so caught up in what was that you can't see what's coming? 
You know, we need to be people constantly looking forward, looking and saying, God, we need you right now. We need you in the future. Our nation needs you. Our city needs you. My family needs you. My kids need you. We need you so badly right now in this moment. What do what new? This is a question I really want you to ponder this week. And if you have taken notes, write this down. What new do I believe God is going to do this year? When you look at your life, I think a lot of us during COVID, we've stopped setting goals for ourselves. Right? We, we have this excuse, well, we can't plan anything because everything changes so constantly. So we stop setting goals for ourselves. But I want you to spend some time talking to God and talking to Jesus and saying, Jesus, what do you have for me this year? And then set goals for yourself. Maybe for you, you struggle when it comes to reading the scriptures and spending time in the word. Maybe you've struggled with that forever. Maybe this is your year to discipline yourself, to set goals for yourself. Say, you know what? I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. every single day and I'm going to spend time in the Word. That, that's hard to do though. Like my alarm went off at 6 this morning. I was like, nah. You know, like, I don't, like it's 6 in the morning. I don't want to get out of bed. I enjoy the cozy, comfy bed. But that's the thing about discipline. Discipline is always letting go of what's comfortable for what's best. Right? So, so for us, if we're comfortable when it comes to some of the things in our life, even if it's addiction or sin, if we're comfortable in sin, we're never going to actually get what's best for us. Because we're not perceiving what God has for us in this moment. See, if we don't perceive what God's doing, we're never going to go anywhere. What's going to happen is we're going to walk around the wilderness for 40 years waiting for the next generation to get the promise God gave us. And see, I don't want to get to the end of my life and realize that the promise that God had for me, I missed out on because I didn't perceive what he was doing. I didn't perceive the new that he had for us. I don't want that to be me. I want to get 40 years from now and say, God, I did exactly what you called me to do. It wasn't easy. I had to discipline myself. I had to perceive what you were doing. But it was amazing because I followed you. That's what I want for me. And that's what I believe God has for us as a church as well. So you can tell I'm pretty fired up about this. Because I, like, so strongly, I believe God is doing something beautiful right now. And I know, let's be real, I know but sometimes it's really hard to see God moving. I know that. Like I know that when there's, there, there, there's, there's grief in family, I know that, that when Pastor Jonathan, we tra did this transition, I know for a lot of us there was still grief that we're dealing with from that. I know that. And it's, sometimes it's really hard to say, say God, I don't, I don't see you moving. I don't, I don't see you. Where are you? I know that that's sometimes how we feel. But I'm telling you, we need to perceive what God is doing. What was past, what you used to do, who you used to be does not need to be your future. The trauma does not need to be your future. The pain does not need to be your future. Even the good stuff. Have you ever seen a guy who played football in high school, 40 years later still living the glory days of high school? Have you ever seen that? You ever seen that? I'm like, that was 40 years ago. Surely, surely there's something in the past 40 years that God did in your life too. Right? Like, like, like God is constantly doing things. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. There is still something more for you in your future. There's still something so big for you in your future. We cannot just relive the good of the past because, yes, the past for some of us was great. There's a lot of good things, but there's something more beautiful in the future for you. That's what I truly believe. Even though sometimes it's hard to see, even though sometimes it's hard to perceive, we want to encourage you to get involved with the new that God has for us here at our church. I want to encourage you to come on board and serve and continue to serve and see what God is going to do. Because I, I, again, I don't know, right? All I'm doing is listening and sharing what I feel God is speaking and believing that God's going to do something. I don't know what it's going to be. But I do believe 
that God is doing something beautiful in here. I want to get in, get, encourage you to get involved by serving on one of our teams. Maybe you can start ushering or greeting or helping with children's ministry or worship or, or, or media or cameras, whatever it is. We're looking for people to partner with us with this vision that God is going to reach our city with the gospel. Because our city needs Jesus and we're carriers of Jesus. So our responsibility is to share Jesus. So I want to encourage you, get involved on one of our teams. Getting involved, we're going to be launching small groups over the next six months. Get involved in a small group. We want to connect with you, right? We want to, and we believe that Victory Church on the Rock will, will be a place where people can become known. That's what we believe. And yeah, you know what? We're, gonna, we're not going to do that perfectly every time. I know that. We're not, we're not perfect. We're broken humans trying to help God create a good future, right? But I believe Victory Church on the Rock will be a place where people become known for who they truly are. For who they really are. That we don't have to hide anything. We don't have to pretend. We can walk in and be real and we will be loved, we will be valued, and we will be discipled in that moment. Now, uh, the last part of this verse, Isaiah 43 verse 19 says this, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, like when we think about this, the imagery here is unbelievable. Now, especially, I believe, in the middle of the wilderness and the chaos our world is in right now. It seems like every time we turn on the news, there's another tragedy. There's another hurricane. There's another storm. There's a, another people dying in the streets. There's, there's another mandate. There's another restriction. And every time we turn on the news or open Facebook, there's something new that we have to be worried about. There's another need in our city and there's just tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. And I'm going to be honest with you, to be honest, the last year has felt like I'm in the wilderness sometimes. Where I'm in the desert. I don't know how it's been for you, but there's been moments where I felt there's no way out. There's no, there's no way for me to actually get to where I believe God has for me. But God always creates a way out. He will make a way out of COVID-19. You know, he will make a way out of these restrictions and he will make a way out of all the opinions. God will make a way out of the grief that you're experiencing. We serve a God who makes a way out. Yes, sometimes we're stuck in the wilderness but God is saying, I'm going to take you out. We're going into the future. We're creating something new together and it's going to be beautiful. I will make a way where there is no way. He will make a way out. He will make a way out every single time. Even if we let ourselves to the wilderness. Even if it's the choices we made that led us there. He will make a way out. You may feel like you've been in the wilderness year after year after year, day after day, week after week, hour after hour, minute after minute. That's where you might feel like you are right now in this moment. But God is creating a way to something new. And the hard thing is that sometimes we don't know the destination. Sometimes we don't actually know where we're going. It's like getting in our car and somebody puts in a GPS location and all we have to do is just follow the directions. We don't know where we're going. Sometimes. But we have to follow the instructions. We have to listen to the voice of the Savior. That's what we need to listen to. And then some of us, we need to stop creating our own way out. You know, and it's easy, right? Because when things are hard, when we feel like we're in the wilderness, we will do whatever it takes to get out. Right? We will create roads if we have to. We'll throw sticks on the ground and try and walk on sticks. But the reality is you're never going to make it out by yourself. It's the truth. You're never going to make it out. And if we're trying to create our own way out, we try and create a, create a road... We're never going to get where we're supposed to go. Because what's going to happen is you're going to burn out. You're going to respond to people in anger. You're going to hurt people by accident or on purpose. Because we're going to do everything we can. And when we try and take the power of creating the new, that's when things start to fall apart for us. Because God is the one creating the new. He says, I will make a way out. He doesn't say you will make a way out. He doesn't say figure it out. You figure it out. No, he says no. I'm creating a way. Your responsibility is to follow the way. Your responsibility is to just go and step into the future that I have for you. We try and put our blood, sweat, and tears in trying to go where we want to go. 
But God is saying, no, I am making a new way. I am making a new path. I am making a new future. You will never get there on your own. And we need to hold on to this promise. This promise that God is saying. Let's go back to that, that verse right from the beginning. Uh, yeah. This is the promise I believe God is saying to you right now. And to us right now. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness, and I will make a way our rivers in the desert. That's the promise of God for us right now in this moment. I will make a way. That is the promise. I'm going to invite the, the piano player. I'm going to invite Prince up to play here, but in the midst of COVID, in the midst of masks, in the midst of restrictions, in the midst of transition, in the midst of government, in the midst of transition and division, in the midst of confusion, and in the midst of fear, in the midst of transition and change, God is saying, behold, I am doing a new thing. He is saying, in the midst of all this stuff, in the midst of the hurricanes, in the midst of the storms, in the midst of the tragedy, in the midst of all that, he says, I am making a way out. But do we perceive it? Like he's saying this, right? But do we actually believe that? I know the world is in chaos. Like, I, I know. But God is making a way out. I, I know that, that, that things have been challenging. I know. But God is doing something new. He says, behold. Now when somebody says behold, that's a big word. We pay attention. Behold, I am doing a new thing. There is a way out. There, there is a brighter future, and I think a lot of us, we can't, we can't lose hope. It's so easy to lose hope. You know? When July 1st came, you know, we had hope. It, hey, you know, restrictions are done, and now some of them are coming back, and we think, oh, I can't hope anymore. To be honest, Whatever the restriction is, why are we putting our hope in the wrong thing? Why are we putting our hope in what the government is saying? We can't. And I think so many of us, we've put our hope, and I've said this so many times, but we've put our hope in the wrong things. And so when that changes, we lose all hope. Right? If our hope was was again that you know we're free we're, we're the province is open and that's what you hoped in we were setting ourselves up for disaster right when we started because that's not our hope is not in anything other than jesus you know god is saying i'm making a way a new way the government tries to say that sometimes right we say that sometimes i i'm making a way i'm gonna make this happen you ever heard a guy say that when they're building something I'm going to make it happen, right? Then it just like doesn't work, you know? And it's like, you can't make it happen. But who can? It's Jesus. He'll make it happen. You know how he made it happen? He went to the cross. Right? Our hope is in the cross. Our hope is when Jesus did. That's what we hope in. You know, transition brings change and change brings new. But we don't have to be scared of the new, right? We don't have to be scared of change, but we should be excited. Why? Because to be honest, it doesn't really matter who the pastor is. It matters who we worship, right? Like really. Like it doesn't matter who the leader is. It matters who we worship. It doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter the fear. It doesn't matter all of it. All that matters is who we worship. And who we worship was raised from the dead after three days and brought salvation and brought prosperity and brought life and brought love and brought joy and brought peace to each and every single one of us. That's what we hope in. 
And we, we need to start walking in this promise because so long we've been walking and we've been so afraid, we've been so scared, we've been so caught up in everything around us when our eyes are focused on the wrong thing. Because where you look, you will go. If all we look for is restriction, that's where we'll go. If what we look for is Jesus, that's where we go. Jesus. That's where I want to go. So when somebody comes and says, hey, what are your thoughts on, on all this stuff? You know what my thoughts are? Jesus is on the throne. That's my opinion. You know, I, I, like that's my opinion. You might ask, what do you think about this? To be honest, I don't care. What I care about is Jesus. He is the one that we worship. He is the one that we put our hope in. Now we believe now this is, we believe that God is going to use our church to fill heaven and, heaven and rob hell. That's what I believe. <laughs> you know why we do this? It's for community, of course. But also why we do this? The only thing we bring with us to heaven is other people. Right? We don't bring our car or our house. or We bring people, right? So we work so hard striving for all these things. When it's like, Man, like, cool, but like, bring people with us, you know? That's what I believe our church is for, that we will see salvations and baptisms and people getting healed. You know, when Beth and I started here in March, we felt so strongly that God speaking to us that September would be a springboard into our future. That the first few months would be settling in and getting to know people and you know, not doing, not changing a lot, just kind of stepping in and now we feel like it's time for us to start to fight for something new. That's how we feel. You know, next week we're going to be starting this new series. We're calling it Together We Go. Because the only way that we go is we go together. We can't go alone. We go together. And so it's called Together We Go. And we'll be talking about the future for seven weeks. We have seven values, seven thoughts that we've created that I believe will help us when it comes to making decisions, that will help us when it comes to how we do things, that will help us when it comes to reaching the lost, that will help us when it comes to everything that we do. We're going to go through each one of those every single week, one every week. God, I believe God is going to use this series to bring life and to bring something new. So I want to encourage all of us, this is our opportunity to invite somebody to be a part of what God is doing here. I, I'm telling you, inviting people to church is so hard. It really is. Like, we can, some people are like excellent at it, right? Like some people, it's like, yeah, I invited 73 people to church and they all came. You're like, I don't even have 73 friends, right? Like, but it's hard. But I want to encourage you, let's be bold. Because our boldness and our courage that God provides is what's going to see people come to know Jesus. Now, I'm not saying we have all the answers. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that at least we can bring people to a place where they can belong. That they can become known. 